It's been 11 years. The Infinity Blade franchise has gone through a period of great success to now insignificance. The games are all but gone, that much is certain. So how does a mobile game over a decade old sustain a community that is not only alive, but thriving? That is the tale of this Infinity Blade anniversary video, the history of the Infinity Blade community, and it starts with you. A new mobile game from the Apple Store has been released. The Infinity Blade franchise sets the standard for mobile games. This mobile franchise has set the standard for all to come, using the Unreal Engine in a remarkable fashion. Infinity Blade's update, Kingdom Come, has been revealed to be its last. Today is December 10th, 2018. This just in, Infinity Blade has been taken off the App Store. They claim a lack of resources to continue support for the franchise. So go in the Epic Games. The Infinity Blade forms have been hacked. According to Epic Games, it has become increasingly difficult for our team to support the Infinity Blade series at a level that meets our standards. This community does not have an easy history to track, mainly because there is essentially two separate versions that rose during different times. There was the community during the game's life cycle, and the community that exists post-removal. Many members have contributed to this video, some with their own accounts of events, and others with information that contributed to the writing of the script. I will attempt to take this in chronological order, so we will begin with the easier days. The days of the forums, pantheons, clash mobs, superfans, and wiki. The Infinity Blade forums were a message board platform organized by Epic Games. Members of the community would converse amongst each other, mainly on topics such as meta strategies and club-like competitions, much like the Discord we use today. This was essentially the only place people used to discuss Infinity Blade. Prominent members, such as Tamil Channel, Infinity Blade, and Twine the Vile were all YouTubers that were in the forum, and many of their guides are a direct result of tips and tricks that other users informed them of. Within the forums were the clubs that rewarded players for crazy achievements. For example, a notable club in Infinity Blade 2 was the Level 2000 Club, pretty self-explanatory. Those who achieved the 2000th level were granted access on the leaderboard, Every thousand level above that would grant them a higher rank on the leaderboard. Other notable clubs include the Awakening, Deathless Mode, Worker of Secrets, and God King clubs, which focus on leveling and facing increasingly difficult bosses. You might recall the term Pantheon from the lore of Infinity Blade, which states that Rajar's Pantheon was a select group of Deathless who ruled the world. From the forum came these pantheons, groups of dedicated players who worked towards other insane challenges for prestige and bragging rights. The forum pantheon was composed of houses, an example being the warlord Thane, who we know was lord of house Ix. The forum pantheon had ten houses, organized in Roman numerical order. To join a house was a tedious journey, and once you entered, you could not leave. There was a bidding system that houses used to initiate new members, and once completed, the houses would work with their new players towards challenges. An example of a bid is to kill the god king at level 3500 while level 45 in IV1. Extremely difficult and extremely rewarding. Despite the difficult system, many players ended up participating in the Pantheon. This Pantheon was led by Grant No and SAV aka Infinity Blade fans. The Pantheon was a brilliant example of skill, camaraderie, and pure fun. Sadly, the forums closed and now can only be viewed via the web archive tool. The Epic Games Player Pantheon was an official Chair Games backed project that awarded the most influential community members during the time. Only three members ever gained this prestige Grant No, Vile Majesty, and of course, Tamil Channel. Grant No was the IB superfan, Vile Majesty was the forum leader, and Tamil was the YouTuber. This concludes what we remember about the forums Pantheon information by the archivist, naturally. Now for some information about Clash Mobs by current YouTuber Ivy Recollection. Clash Mobs were a very important part of Infinity Blade. They were competitions with a large array of different goals including battling strong enemies or getting as many parries as possible in a minute. But most importantly, they are the primary reason people kept playing the game after beating it the first few times. The endless events always allowed players to open the game to something new each day. Clash Mobs also brought the game a sense of community that it was missing. Before the addition of Clash Mobs, Infinity Blade was a mostly solo experience. The introduction of Clash Mobs allowed players to work together to complete goals like taking down strong enemies. 
They also featured a live participant count as well as an updating progress bar to track everyone's stats. Additionally, players could join a clan of sorts to get bonuses. Clash mobs were also a genius idea to make Infinity Blade socials more popular. By liking posts on Infinity Blade social medias, players were given extra rewards at the end of each Clash mob. This made their Facebook and Twitter way more popular, further promoting the game. By the time Infinity Blade 3 came out, they had refined the Clash Mob system even more. It was almost impossible not to notice the presence of other players. You could now compete against other players to win exclusive items in Aegis tournaments. You did not need to link your Infinity Blade account to Facebook anymore to participate in Clash Mobs. And you could even talk to other players using the chat feature. Unfortunately, Clash Mobs are no longer present in Infinity Blade. But if Clash Mobs had never existed, the game would never have been as big or have such a dedicated fanbase. Thank you, Ivy Recollection. Consider subscribing to his channel for more Clash Mob related info. Now for the Ivy Superfan Contest. Infinity Blade Superfan was a competition held by Chair in pursuit of fighting the biggest Infinity Blade fan out there. Whoever had the best creation would become the winner and win a variety of prizes. If you are acquainted with my channel, you would know that Grant knows Infinity Blade Minecraft map won him the title of Superfan. In turn for this majestic creation, No was able to create and name a weapon, No Mercy, as well as some in-person interactions with the Chair Studios. Sadly, this was the only event of its kind, and Superfan remains the greatest award to date. Now for the Infinity Blade Wiki. The Infinity Blade Wiki is one of the last true remnants of the old days. All articles are present and guides still available. The wiki's purpose, like any good fandom, is to both guide players for the best strategies as well as instructional lore. It fails completely. I don't know where the wiki got it wrong, whether it comes to misinformation, fan fictions on like the Ausar page, or just the fact that any schmuck can edit it, but it is filled with misinformation and straight up lies. We are going to cleanse this planet Radriar and start anew. Thanks for watching Tamil Channel, your favorite channel for Infinity. What's going on guys, I'm Sab and I'm back here to bring you another video. To Blade Master, this is Thailand bringing you the details. Practically everybody who wants to get better at Infinity Blade has watched a Tamil Channel guide or Infinity Blade Master's video. This era of Infinity Blade was perhaps its greatest. Channels dedicated to gameplay and news had thousands of subscribers and uploaded consistently. People understood how to complete easter eggs because the path was laid out. Gems, Silogen, New Game Plus, and Deathless Mode have all been explored to their limits by YouTubers we knew and loved. Sadly, every single channel came to an end. Why? Well, it's simple. The update stopped and progress was lost. Users such as the St. Hills math teacher had thousands of deathless levels completed, but all that was lost in the future. Instead of stopping, another YouTuber, Tamil Channel, tried to go over to different games, but if you've seen her comment section as of late, you would probably stop making videos too. The Infinity Blade Masters channel was a multi-user effort, yet only one had control of the uploading process, so that died fairly quickly. To sum it all up, the old era of Infinity Blade YouTube was about new features in game grinding, when the updates stopped coming, they all became irrelevant very, very fast. Perhaps the project with the most potential, Infinity Blade Chronicles was a planned live-action film detailing the events of the franchise. It was led by Josh Aker, the composer of the Infinity Blade OST, and thus gained a lot of attention. And they actually managed to raise $100,000, which is $300,000 short of the goal. This project died before it could get the funding required, and sadly we now have no live action in Infinity Blade. This concludes the old community. Everything from this point onwards has happened many years after the game stopped receiving updates. The next topic we will discuss is the attempted ports into fan games. There was a user on the Discord who had attempted to remaster the Infinity Blade games. This project was given a cease and desist by Epic Games after establishing contact. This is not entirely unsurprising given that Epic's terms in their marketplace, in reference to Infinity Blade assets, specifically state that there is no allowance for attempted remasters or sequels. Now, Infinity Blade Bloodlines. This was a fan game in development headed by two prominent Discord users. There had been some slight animation work, files, and other assets in use. 
Unfortunately, due to some vile corruption and general lack of drive, Bloodlines 2 was unsuccessful. <laughs> then, Project Sword. This is a game that I am currently working on, both by learning Unreal Engine and by taking an online class. Inspired by the fallen game Infinity Blade Dungeons, Project Sword will be a dungeon crawler game featuring assets and weapons from the Infinity Blade marketplace. I'm not attempting to recreate the games, but to create an experience similar to that of the unreleased dungeons. Now, for some words about the evolution of the Discord server by Admin Zeke and Halpor Glorangia. Hey everyone, I'm Zeke. I've been part of the IB community since like 2018. I became an admin in the main Infinity Blade server in like 2020, the middle of it or so. And I pretty much became the second in command for the main server in Infinity Blade. Something I do pretty often in the Infinity Blade server is I do a lot of like organizational work and just modernizing it, making it look more fresh and, and new. Um, before I became admin, it was very messy, so I just kind of helped out there. In Discord, it's really changed a lot. I joined the, before the games came off the App Store, so a lot of people that I knew back then really haven't played much since I've been here for so long. One of the biggest changes I've, I've done was adding the DM roles to the server. I persuaded Viento when I was, you know, just a regular user, and we actually added the DM roles, which, which kind of kickstarted the whole organization, the role progression we have in the server now. When the games were taken off the App Store the first time, uh, the community managers, they gave the ownership to Viento, and he became the owner. Over time, I just kind of was closer with Viento and I got admin as well. And after the takedown in the App Store, a lot more the conversation in like the actual server was a lot more about how to install the game or how to get the game or an Apple ID account. I remember specifically Desarch had an Apple ID everyone can sign into and grab the games. This got way worse when the Epic versus Apple lawsuit happened. Pretty much the whole server went into the point where we thought the games were going to die. We had no way to really get the games anymore. And then Stu PDD, which is one of our original helpers, I uh, came up with a way to um, install the game and the server pretty much went to the point where it was very little talking about the game and a lot more talking about how to install and all that kind of stuff like that. Over time we eventually got Chloro, Mercs, and Ivy Studios himself to actually help with installations. Uh, they've been a huge help and they're kind of carrying the server at this point. Easily over 70% of the talk in the server is about how to install the games. Something else we did was that we made clubs. Uh, clubs were these little forum posts when the epic forums were still up and they kind of listed out challenges you can do and you kind of were honored in those in those clubs and those forum posts and they're usually pretty grindy or, or really tough to do like five to ones or super high levels in games and we really want to do that because I wasn't around personally for the epic forums days but Viento was and he was a part of some clubs so I just thought it would be kind of fun to bring them back. It was one of the first things I did as an admin. And we both work together to make both the clubs we have in the game now, uh, have in the server now. And that would be, you know, the Reviled Club and the Aegis Fight Club. The Reviled Club is much more like grinding levels and, and getting to a certain point in the game. And it's a big number, big good, right? And I pretty much became the head of that club. And Vance became the head of the Aegis Fight Club, which is about five to ones and skill fights. We pretty much worked together pretty closely to get these clubs going. We kept working together to make sure these clubs are going as best as possible. And they really only be existed because I think Daedalus... Infinity Blade 2 player, he found like a bunch of old form archives and we actually have those public in our server so you guys can go check them out. Something else I really wasn't a part of when it was made was Deathless of the Month. These are like monthly challenges that happen in a span of a month and these were mainly supposed to kind of keep the community actively playing the game. They have a tangible goal rather than just having a bigger number. We've had IB3, IB2 level challenges, an Infinity Blade 1 survival arena challenge, uh, an IB1 multiplayer tournament. Uh, our first autumn was a lowest stats to kill the worker in IB3, um, an art challenge, and these really evolved to include a huge portion of the community. Uh, especially people who just got the games they're really like formed around having like a new save or something that you don't need any games for it's just like the art challenge a lot of inactive people come back and do these dotems and it's really cool to see people that i haven't talked to in a while just come back and actually can participate the art one in specific gave us a bunch of new art for previously unseen parts of the, the lore which is like the books a lot of people drew we actually had two weeks of people drawing book scenes and everything that was really cool to see overall i'm really happy to be a part of the, the ib community i think i play a pretty large part in the community i'm really happy to do that i'm pretty lucky to be able to be in the position to do that so future plans for the server i'm kind of like hoping to get the community more involved specifically with death of the month challenges i recently made an interest form for people to fill out they'll be able to apply to be a coordinator and help host dotems and be a part of that whole process I'd also like to kind of expand on clubs a little more. I'm thinking about doing something like the Pantheon, which is a club that was found way back in Epic Forms. Um, I had a lot of different challenges. You can do bids to rank up, and I think that's pretty fun. So yeah, 
overall, I think I'm pretty happy to be in IB community and thanks to IB Studios for going to be on the video. Hey yo, Clorandra here. I've only been recently active in the IB community as of this year, but it's been a blast. Some people may know me through helping out with side loading. For those who don't know, that is downloading from a third party source, which is not the App Store. As you may know, this is the only way for us to experience the Infinity Blade games. I was also a person who wanted to experience the games again after deleting them from my iPad, and I was elated to discover that there was a way. I also struggled with installing, but Lord Merckx was there to help out. He's another helper and has helped with making tutorials for the installation channels. After I installed, I began to help others install, and then helpers became a role within the server. Stu PDT was vital to this whole operation. He was the one who had the original text instructions and supplied the IPAs. I am very thankful to his contributions to siloing. I as a helper had to learn to be patient with others, and sometimes I still update the installation frequently asked section. Others may know me through my IP fan art that's far and few in between. When Zeke put out a Deathless of the Month challenge for September on art, I was hyped, but I was also conflicted because I had started school. That left me time to only work on Fridays and Saturdays, as the deadline for each week was on Sunday. I'm still proud of what I drew, but I think for those who have the eye for it, it is clear I rushed the art or did not have time on my side. It was awesome to see art from other members of the community. I don't mean to discredit those I don't mention, but Blossicus and Anantar's art especially stood out to me. In October, I decided to dip my toes into the Aegis Fight Club. You guys would probably be familiar with the 5 to 1 challenges. I think of myself as the most casual of casual players, but it's probably hard to define a standard as what is casual. I never counted how many attempts I had for the first few 5 to 1s, but Archivist, Stone Dew, and Sadie took me hours. They're still fun though. At the time I'm recording this audio, I'm preparing to host a quiz bowl tournament about everything Infinity Blade related. There are many people interested, and I'm glad. I've hosted a quiz bowl match for my friends before, so it's nothing new. Making questions and reading them is fun. For now, I'll have to do all the reading, moderating, and question making for myself. But I hope I can get people to help out after the first tournament. It's best to have something to show before asking for help, I'd say. I want to thank the IB community for surviving this long. The people who still make content like videos for these games are outstanding. Thank you both for that. Now, we come to another server, Infinity Blade Resources. This server houses and contains ripped files directly from the games and put through Blender for visualization. Some words from the creator, Borealis. Hi, hello. Infinity Blade Resources is my way of sharing the assets of Infinity Blade that people normally wouldn't be able to get to see in full. You know, stuff like animations, textures, cut stuff. Uh, I decided to make it after realizing that the main Infinity Blade server wouldn't be big enough to host like everything that I found in the game's assets. Uh, I figured that I'd need my own server for that. That's where Infinity Blade Resources comes from. Not to mention, I thought it would help people with their step-back problems, all for being a big inspiration for me trying to rip the games. I never really gave thought as to what people would do with the stuff I post into it, I just kind of figured it'd be similar to how my art is treated, and people would look at it once and move on. Although, you kind of changed my perception with some of the green screen memes you created. As for myself, I never really had any plans for the files in the servers. It's more of just an archive process, so I'll probably never do much more than what I've already done with them. My end dream goal for Infinity Resources is eventually to archive everything that is in the games. From animations, cut content, to the maps, and you know, everything. If, if there's something that people want from Infinity Blade, well, I, I want it to be in there. Thank you Borealis. Now for some information about the Aegis Fight Club. The Aegis Fight Club is where you can put your skills to the test and prove mastery of the game. This club involves you fighting bosses throughout the game in high ratio skill fights. The main rule is that you use the level of the enemy you wish to fight and divide that by 5. The number you get is the amount of stat points you are restricted to. This is a 5 to 1 ratio, and each fight lasts 5 to 10 minutes depending on the enemy. You can read all of the official rules in the Aegis Fight Club on the Infinity Blade Discord server. The fights are recorded, submitted, and reviewed. If accepted, you will be rewarded with a rule depending on how many bosses you have defeated. There are a total of 40 bosses to defeat in a 5 to 1 skill fight to earn the amazing title, Master of the Aegis Forms. There is a wide range of difficulty throughout the bosses, with some requiring a very high skill or unique methods to defeat. This club will show you the incredible depth that the Infinity Blade combat system has to offer and will push you to your limits. Good luck on your fights. Last but not least, the new era of Infinity Blade YouTube. Alright, I do not have a script for this part. The new era of Infinity Blade YouTube, I suppose, does start with Infinity Blade Studios. In which case, that started around December of 2018. I just wanted to record 
uh, some gameplay from Infinity Blade 3 because no one else had really created like a comprehensive movie. That movie actually sucked, but for some reason I got some subscribers, I got some views, and I made Infinity Blade 2 the movie, and I started making other videos. The coolest thing about what I've seen about YouTube is the other channels. When I was around like six or seven hundred subscribers, you know, I got a notification from this guy who was calling himself the Archivist, and he wanted to make a YouTube channel too. And he did, he made the Infinity Blade Iceberg video. And now we've got the Archivist as well as myself. And then this guy called Pi Pi starts uploading stuff, and he starts doing some lore as well. And then the QI podcast happened. And then there's this guy who decided to open a box, and suddenly we've got IB Recollection who's making badass Clash Mob videos and has only at 70 subscribers. The new era of YouTube has basically just sprung up. People have started realizing that, you know, the games are gone, right? We can't remember them the way that we used to. We got to expand our content in other venues, and that's what we're doing. My original goal of this channel was just to preserve the games and the movies, so anybody watching them could relive the moments. But now I also like to do the character analysis with the Archivist, so we can talk in depth about lore. Also working on projects such as Eternity, which involves, you know, a script that I've composed myself. Basically, the new era of YouTube is just like the old Infinity Blade Masters, people coming together to create experiences for the games that weren't originally available. And that, I believe, sums up the history of the Infinity Blade community.